Hello, everyone, and welcome to a very special edition of In the Community. I'm Jennifer Beck. Well, back in August, late August, a sweet little girl became sick. You probably heard about it if you're from this area. And in early September, 11-year-old Jersey Poff lost her life after a brief illness. What happened next impacted the community, not just the community of St. Mary's from where she was from, but all of Northwest Ohio and beyond for days, for weeks, and now here we are months later, and this special sweet girl who lost her life is still impacting people in such an amazing way. She was known for her heart for Jesus and so many other things. Well, our own Jack McGuire is from St. Mary's and has put together an incredible documentary, which you're gonna see in just a moment. But first, Jack, let's talk about, let's go back to early September. The community you live in, yeah. tell me what it was like once all of this started to unfold. Mind boggling. You hear about this girl instantaneously get sick. My daughters are coming on saying, have you heard how Jersey's doing? We're like, we don't know Jersey. Mm. Who is this Jersey? And you learn about her, you learn about her. And just as you're learning about her, she's gone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so now you ask your kids, how are you feeling? You take it in. I have daughters around her age. How would I feel? And then right as that's happening, this community is drowned in pink. Pink. Yes. Pink on the corner store, pink on the light posts, pink shirts, football games are pinking out. People are taking notice of this little girl who had far more of an impact on people's lives than her parents realized, mm -hmm. than any of us realized, and maybe that even she realized. Mm -hmm. And to see the community of St. Mary's come together, not only so well, but so fast, mm -hmm. And that surrounding community said, we have your back. We're here too. It was just a blessing. It was a sight to see. And it's something that anybody would want if their child had passed away. You've been in the news and sports business for decades now. You had an opportunity over the past few months to sit down with key people in Jersey's family, including her father. What was it like to do that interview? You're about to see this interview, but what was it like to sit down with that situation? There was a strong brokenness mm -hmm. in that conversation. Mm -hmm. He was the father you would expect. They still have other kids in that family. Mm -hmm. And he is living his life to the best of his ability. Mm -hmm. But you see a piece was absolutely taken that will not get replaced. A piece of that puzzle is gone. Mm -hmm. And you feel for him. Mm -hmm. But the words that left his mouth about his daughter the strength this family had going through this situation, it leaves you almost at ease, kind of, that these people can go through this, and when they're at their lowest, everybody behind them was there to catch them. Mm -hmm. The community, the church, friends, family, strangers mm -hmm. were there for these people. So. Yes, it was heartbreaking to hear, but that community, that church around them is definitely what's keeping them together. And now it's your opportunity to experience that community. We present to you Jack McGuire reporting, Live Like Jersey, a girl like none other. I say it all the time, she was her own kind of special, man. At the heart of St. Mary's lies a love for sports, a love for community, and a young, outgoing girl named Jersey Poff. Very smart, <clears throat> very beautiful. Jersey was very kind to people, had a special way about her that just made you want to be around her. Jersey had a big heart, very, very, I mean, just very compassionate, was probably the best big sister, little sister you could ask for. She cared about her older sisters, Morgan, Tanner. She cared about them. Always wanted to know what they were doing, what, what they, 
how they were. Just a delight of a child. Uh, always had a smile, uh, you know, singing a song. Loved to perform, man, on the stage when she came alive. Uh, she um, ha had a great heart for people. Uh, never met anybody she wasn't friends with. Nobody ever, I mean, had bad things to say about her. If you're looking for uh, a kid from her age group to, to say, be like her, I mean, she's the simplest choice. Jersey's infectious personality trickled through every part of town, starting in sports, where at such a young age, she was already a standout at, well, everything. Soccer was her love. Loved, loved, loved soccer, loved her team, loved um, her coach. She wrestled, um, she loved to wrestle. Jersey loved to try everything. I remember there was a time she tried flag football. She tried, she just wanted to, wanted to do whatever she felt like, hey, you know what, I wanna try it. I wanna try, wasn't afraid to try anything. Her drive for life continued in the church as well, where she not only participated, but also set an example in discipleship. She was a leader, she was positive, she was funny. Um, she was in just about everything, so she would come back and forth on Wednesday nights, um, hit or miss. Sunday mornings, she would stand in the back of the church service with me, and then she would lead the kids downstairs um, during worship, and she, she was just a light to be around. And there would be times, literally on Sunday mornings, that you know we'd have a late night for we have sports, or, or we couldn't go, or something, we had something going on. Jersey would wake up on her own, and she'd be like, well, I'm going to church. And we're like, uh, well, we're not going. She'd be like, so? And we're like, okay, well, that's, that's great. That's awesome. She would just come to church. And, you know, if they, they ever needed help with Bible school, Jersey would always volunteer. Jersey would always volunteer to help the kids. A bubbly personality put on display at any opportunity until late August, when Jersey began not feeling well due to sinus problems following a facial injury she suffered over a year prior. They said, you know, she was too young. If, if there was something wrong, if there was a broke, break up error, they, they, she was too young to re-break or fix it. So she's on different medicines, and the first time they tried Bactrim, it was a antibiotic. She was allergic to it. Um, made her really sick. Um, they, we took her off that and you know they tried other things but it still never cleared it up and we were just listening to what the doctor was saying you know trying to figure it out ourselves then it just it just it seems like it was getting worse so <clears throat> we called up and I got her an appointment took her into the doctor and he did a culture and when he did the culture he found out there was a polyp there, and there was three, I can't remember the third one, but I know that she had H influenza in her nose, MRSA, and then they did a CT scan and found out the whole side of her sinuses, every bit of her sinuses were completely sol plugged solid. They had to wait for the cultures, when the cultures came back, they called and said, we want to put her on back trim, and we're like, whoa, 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 can't do that, she's allergic to it, and they're like, well, we want to do it anyway, and we'll deal with the side effects as they come because that's what's going to take care of it. I just started taking it for some reason. I mean, she started having fevers, high fevers, really high fevers. We took her to urgent care. We took her in there and we said, something's not right, you got to fix it. Um, they thought it was a reaction to the bathroom. So they changed her to a higher, like higher antibiotic. And they said, well, this one might have a, she might have a reaction to it and it might give her a stomach ache. We're like, okay. We were sitting there and the next thing you know, she was like, had a stomach ache. And she's like, dad, my stomach hurts. And I'm like, huh? And then next thing is she starts throwing up. So I remember I'm in the bathroom with her and I'm holding her hair and I'm like, and she's like, daddy, I just want it to stop. I'm like, it will, honey, it will. 
Not long after Jersey was put to bed, her mother made the decision to take her daughter to Dayton Children's. However, Jersey's condition began deteriorating rapidly, so they could only make it to Joint Township District Memorial Hospital in St. Mary's. I remember I had to play music that night, and I was going to go out and play music. And I remember I got out there, and it was like I was in my truck, and I pulled up the thing, and I knew Allison was at the hospital. And I don't know what it was. I stopped my truck, and I just couldn't get out. Next thing on my phone rang, and it was Joe, and he's like, you need to get to the hospital. And I'm like, why? He's like, Jersey just had a, a seizure. Jersey had to be placed in a medically induced coma and care flighted to Dayton Children's. We're just sitting in, we get her in there and they have her in the uh, emergency room, IC room, whatever. And down there and all these doctors are running in and out, talking to her and they're getting her on all kinds of medicine and hooked up and saying that they're trying to control the seizures that she's having. They need to get those under control. I remember sitting there with her, holding her hand and they were trying to get the seizures under control and we were watching her feet kept moving and we're like, is she moving? Is she, they're like, well, she can hear you. And we're like, okay. And I just remember talking to her and telling her, making sure she knew. How much she meant to me. Doctors and the family soon realized those foot movements indicated she was still suffering from seizures while in the coma. Doctors then scrambled to conduct emergency testing on Jersey's brain activity. And I remember when they were talking that a tear came down Jersey's eye. And my wife's like, is she crying? And they're like, you know, she could be because she can hear everything that's going on. And I remember then, like, the seizures kind of stopped. And to me, I know now that that's when she went. Neurosurgeon comes in and he's looking her over and asks us, we go in the hallway. <laughs> and he comes out and he says, You've never seen nothing like this. Don't know what's attacking her brain, but her brain has severely, it's severely swollen and it's starting to hemorrhage. And he says, I only have one shot. We have one shot. And I, I remember looking at him and said, I don't care what it is, you save her. Despite the efforts, the procedure failed. Jersey was declared brain dead. I was shocked. I mean, there was just there was just no way. Uh, I, I had just spoken with her, not not that long prior to that, probably a week or two ahead of that. My heart broke, just because there was so much potential, um, and she had taught me so much, being her teacher and spending that time with her, that I just couldn't imagine not ever seeing her smile again or a hug every Sunday morning. So much potential ripped away. It begs the question, is it okay to be angry with God? To sit there and just like tell him like you didn't show up. You had a chance and you didn't show up. I remember walking and I just looking up, just mad saying, why? Why not me? Take me. Why? Why did you choose to take a little girl special as her? Why? You'll never be able to, ever be able to explain to me and ever be able to tell me or justify why. I don't know that I ever will. I've seen a lot of times when people have tried to say, well, you know, if you had faith, this would all, you know, you wouldn't worry about it. That's, that's bogus. That is completely bogus. And uh, so I was very upfront with my congregation. You know, my heart is broken. This is not fair. I'm mad at God. I mean, I was very open about all those things. Because I think if you don't do that, then people will say, well, I do feel that way and maybe I'm wrong. And you're not. We could cite plenty of biblical examples for that. I mean, Jesus went out of the tomb of Lazarus. He got very upset, emotionally overwhelmed, and he, and he wept. And then 
a minute later, Lazarus walks out of the tomb. So he was still upset. Those emotions are real. And uh, I think if we don't allow a room for that, we're being dishonest. We're simply lying to everyone. Within the reality of tragedy, a community came together as St. Mary's became a sea of pink overnight, Jersey's favorite color. Pink ribbons, pink everything. And I'm like, wow, you know, you never, I mean, you as a parent know your kid's special. You, I mean, there's nobody gonna tell you your kid's not special. But when the community and the people that come out and everybody knows her and they do the things they did, that just shows you how special she was. It's the presence of those around you that provides the most support. I mean, that, that's the most important thing a church can give is just to be present. And, and I cannot even tell you how proud of this, the whole community, Wayne Street, of course, but the whole community for just turning out for everything. Because this is hard. I mean, even just to go to a funeral like that is hard. And, uh, you know, the, the line went on for hours and hours. And I, I know that's overwhelming for the family, but at the same time, it's a statement to say this matters to us. Van Wert, Defiance, Wapakoneta, and more joined in the support of the family through pink out games and more, cementing her impact on an ever growing community. Is it overwhelming? Absolutely. Is it amazing to see and to see that it's bigger than sports and anything else? That, and it's, it's good to know that there's still love and compassion in the world. So sometimes you wonder. Most kids would say to me, why, why Jersey? And I would say back, why not? I could die and not have that kind of effect on anybody. But the fact that she did it for three communities, if not more, and then all the amount of kids I've never seen our sanctuary that packed before, um, because they loved her, so why not? With that growth in community comes a growth in the church as well, always led by an ever-loving 11-year-old girl simply quoting her favorite Ann Wilson song, Let Me Tell You About My Jesus. What a better person to bring our community get together to, to be a, a witness of God's love and, and just His faithfulness, regardless of how crazy and cruel this world can be. She was definitely um, just a special young lady. My hope is is that the kids in her class and the, and, the, and the people who are around her and the kids who knew her from church and the kids who knew her from soccer and dance and, and theater and everything else she was in, I hope they all look at this and say, wow, look what Josie did. I want to be like that. To, to know that she was out there on her own without anybody else telling her what she had to do was like amazing. And I tell people, I'm like, I'd love to take credit for all that, but I can't. She was her own kind of special. She did what she wanted to do on her own. She, and I believe it was her faith in Jesus, her faith in just all of that that just made her be so good. I can tell people if there's anyone in this world that deserves to be in heaven and that you know when they pass, without a doubt, sh she's there. I'm sure she uh, probably talked to Jesus and found a way to probably be competitive and says, hey, I'm gonna get a pink sky, she, if she, you know. And she found a way to do it. I'd like to believe she's seeing it all right now. She's looking at it and I would like to think she's smiling, singing, and happy. Um, happy to see everybody coming in, happy to see everybody getting, trying to find their faith, find their purpose. Everybody trying to be kind, do more, live like Jersey. I like to think that she would be super happy with the way she has touched lives 
that's all she ever wanted to do. But then again, I'd like to sit there and think that she misses us. In St. Mary's, Jack McGuire, WTLW. What a story, what an account, what a life. Live like Jersey. Pastor Neil Whitney is with me now so we can talk about some of the emotions that were brought up um, through the documentary that just aired because there definitely were a lot. I mean, anytime someone goes through the death of a loved one, it's tough. But now we're talking about the death of an 11 year old girl, girl. and a lot of people um, like it was even brought up in the in the documentary. A lot of people are going to be mad at God. Why? This isn't fair. Is it OK to be mad at God? Absolutely. My mother told me when I was real little that there's no place in the Bible where it says that life's going to be fair. Mm -hmm. And she was so right. When I see somebody getting mad at God, I'm actually thankful because they're recognizing there is a God. Yeah. So that's a good yeah. start. Mm -hmm. And it's a way to cry out to God too, which is really the first step in uh, being mad at God. And God's used to people being mad at him. <laughs> it's no problem for him. So if someone uh, is, is obviously this, this situation still has a lot of hurt for all the people who, who lost her, but we, at Christmas time, so many people are going through the difficulties of lost loved ones or broken family relationships or right. things that they did not ask for. Um, so are you saying they can, they can yell at God? They can, they can give it to him and it's all gonna be all right? I definitely know you can yell at God because I have many times in my lifetime some of, maybe the lowest time of my life was the death of my wife. Mm. And I definitely yelled at God at that time. And uh, in the spirit, he said to me, you love her? Yeah. Mm. You want the best for her? Yeah. She's got it. Mm. I'll never forget that. Mm. So when you cry out to God, then the next thing you do is let him know what your need is. Mm. And what your need is. God knows your need. And God will meet you at the point of your need every time, every time. So you saw that, you experienced that with your wife. Yep. And now we have, uh, as we saw with the Poff family, are hopefully experiencing that as well as they get ready for the Christmas season without their 11-year-old right. daughter. Yeah. Yeah, there's no way around it. It's just plain hard. And there's no way around it. And you just have to walk through it. I mean, after you cry out to God and you let him know what your needs are, the next part's the hard part, and that is to be thankful. Yeah. To be thankful. The, when my wife died, my friend sent me a card and said, in everything, give thanks. I took that card and threw it across the room. <laughs> <laughs> a couple of weeks later, I went and picked it up. And that's right. So cry out to God, let him know what you need, and then be thankful. Be, have an attitude of gratitude, even in the midst of the pain, because in the end, God's in control, mm -hmm. and it's going to be okay. You just have to be patient. I mean, God answers prayers like yes, no, wait, and sometimes God has a better idea. And his timing is so different than what ours is. Oh, my goodness. We have no idea what time is. <laughs> God does. But let's talk about the issue of fairness. Jersey Poff was 11 years old. She was, Ill. she was sick for a very short period of time. Right. How is this fair? How is this fair that uh, that light for Jesus would be taken so early? People are asking that. How is it fair? Well, when we look at that from our human perspective, we probably assume that that isn't fair. But you don't know what she did in the amount of time that she mm -hmm. was here. She, she had on her soccer jersey, Watch Me Jesus. I'll never forget that. Because she was saying to Jesus, watch me. But she was also saying to the world, watch me be Jesus. So can you think of a better example that you could leave for those following you? And one of the girls at her church was on her soccer team. She just loved her. She loved her cause, because she was salt and light to everybody on that team. So I would challenge people to go out like she did and say, watch me be Jesus. Mm -hmm. And besides that, a day is like a thousand years to God. So we get caught up in time. So when we get to heaven, 
11 years is not very much. Well, and if you look at the 11 years, what she did in her 11 right. years, I think back to when I was 11, and I, uh, I uh, <laughs> not even close to being a witness for Christ as what this bright and beautiful young lady Amen. was. And that is going to live on yeah. forever. Yeah. She made the best of every minute. That's what we're supposed to do. Trust God in the process and know that God's sovereign and God has a plan and we're part of that plan and we need to live that plan. All right. Live like Jesus. Amen. Just like Jersey Poff did. Amen. Every single day we can do the same thing. Pastor Neil Whitney, thank you so much. Thank you. For sharing those important and valuable biblical thoughts. And thank you for watching this edition of In the Community. Don't forget our annual funding campaign continues. You can donate by going online to axeministries.com or give us a call. More In the Community shows will greet you in 2024. Merry Christmas, everyone.